Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and today we're going to take a quick look at a program called Marmoset Hexels 2. Now, uh, Marmoset Hexels is a 2D painting and animation app with a bit of a twist. Uh, it's a cool program, as I'm sure you will see in a few minutes. Now, uh, it's available on Steam for uh, $38 Canadian, so probably about $30 US, uh, or directly from their website for, once again, $38, um, but I am not sure if it's smart enough to know which currency to switch that in, but basically it's about 30 bucks on Steam. Uh, assuming you're using American money. And um, let's jump right in and take a look at it. Now, there's a number of different default templates you can use to get started. Um, you can start with this classic hexel drawing, which basically is a hexagonal shape. Uh, what I probably will use the most often is triaxels, which basically is perfect for isometric art. Uh, and you'll see how these things work in general. We'll also come back in a few minutes and show you squares, which basically uh, we'll call pixels. Or, or fat grid pixels, but there's a number of different default starting styles you can use, um, and you can kind of switch between them as we go about it. So let's start off with the uh, uh, triaxels, and we'll go from there. So here is your primary interface, uh, pretty straightforward. You can zoom in and out using Alt and the middle mouse button. Uh, you can pan using space bar and the left mouse button. And here's your default grid. Your grid controls are over here. So if you want to make your grid smaller under document, you can go ahead and do that like so. Uh, you can also turn the background off or on. Uh, you can also toggle how your grid shows, uh, the opacity of said grid, uh, the color of the grid, etc. And that grid is very important because uh, it's the crux of our controls here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just start painting using uh, triaxels in this shape. In this case, now you'll notice up here I have a number of different shapes I can choose from. Uh, including this guy right here, which I hope my mouse tip gives me the name of. I guess it's not going to. Um, but basically this is a quad, as you see how my grid looks right now. As I switch between the uh, different perspectives, it gives me a slightly different grid. And this is some pretty powerful stuff. Let's say I wanted to create an apartment building. I'm going to start off with this guy. Uh, we're going to jack our brush size up to three. And we're basically just going to... Mm, our color, set our color to a grayish color, like so, and let's just start drawing. Ah, so there is, let's make it a little fatter. There is our apartment building. Now I'm going to switch my brush size down, and we'll fill in the top. Like so. Now, you're kind of missing a little bit of definition here. Where does your wall and where's your shape end? Well, that's kind of cool. As you come in here to switch to this guy, which is your line uh, drawing tool, you can change the width of it, the opacity of up here. And we can also set if we're coloring or erasing. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn this to black. And we're going to use this to create our contour shapes. So I'm on the one edge. And I'm just basically drawing around the outside edge. Now, that's not really showing that well because it was the outside edge and our background is black. Uh, this one will show a bit better. So now we're going to go there, we'll draw that guy to the end, and then we'll do some interior line, like so. So now we've got a little bit more detail on our con. Oops, that was a bit of a mistake on that one here. Let me just go ahead and change our perspective out. Uh, hmm. That's my actual perspective. So now I need to go back to that erase mode and we'll get rid of you. And we'll get rid of you. I guess I gotta get rid of all of you too. Alright. Color. There. And what I will need to do is get rid of this guy. There we go. So there is our perspective shape for the most part. I missed a little line. Let me go ahead and get rid of that guy. Okay. Line mode. Erase. And done. So there is our uh, ghetto apartment building shape done up. Now let's say I want to add a little bit more detail on the inside. So I want to go ahead and add uh, windows, for example. Well, I haven't given myself enough detail on this particular shape. So what I can do is come up here and run a script on it, and I can subdivide. Uh, so now we have way more detail going on. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, so Alt and the middle mouse button, like so. And we're just going to grab, oops, I'm going to go back to color mode. Good. Draw a rectangle, like so. Come on, and enter to clear. All right, so there is our internalized shape. I'm going to go ahead and fill it with a slightly different color. Back to our drawing here. All right, so there are my windows. Now, what I can do is I can come down here 
into uh, this mode. And I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, brush. Hold down shift as I click more and we'll get a bit more of a selection. All right, so there's my basic window shape. I'm just going to go ahead and clone that. So control Z, control C, control V, and you'll see now I can just move it around like so. And now I'm going to do this selection again and shift click and then control C, control V, and we'll just bring it down. Control C, control V, control C, control V, etc. And you can quickly and rapidly draw uh, your various uh, different shapes and, and details, etc., as needed. Uh, now, as you're going to want to switch to perspective, so let's say, so so far I've got a, this perspective basically of a standard isometric view. So I come back down here. Now let's go back to the color we were using. Now, one of the cool things you'll see with the color is as we are using them, they're being added to our palette. So we can quickly switch between uh, the colors we've defined that way. So I'm going to go back to the paint mode. And so my perspective, paint, blender, replace. So I want to replace one size, paint. Oh, and I clear my selection. I do that in every single paint application you've ever used. So I can come in here. Basically, we can add some detail that way, but let's say we wanted to ramp this down a bit. So we want to start ramping it down this direction. So what we can do now is just change our perspective up to that particular drawing angle. So now when we draw it down, that is the constraints in which our paint tool is used. So you can quickly and easily get, you know, that isometric look going, the, the, the angles and so on that you want to work at can easily be drawn and managed this way. And we've got another couple of different angles, you know, so if you want to go on a ramp going up this direction, uh, we can do so this way. Uh, we can do a sideways angle, like so, etc. So it's great for working an isometric level art. Now, another thing you can do here, uh, we can come on over here, and you'll see down here we have layer control. So I can actually draw on top of or below this particular image. So let's say I'll go ahead and create a new layer. So this layer is now above. Um, let's go, go ahead and say, I don't even know what I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this as the, the background, make the background as a blue sky. Uh, so first off, we need a blue. And we'll go above. This guy's a gun to cheer up. Ah, right, there we go. Now we'll change our brush. We'll go back to this big square guy. Uh, or, you know, we could go with uh, that style, the, the buttonish style. We'll make that guy a lot bigger. We'll dial its apparency back a little bit. And we'll just go ahead and create. And now you see how it's doing this additive over top. So if I change the opacity down as I was drawing, or if I did that before I drew, you would have a lot less effect on the underlying layer. Now what we really want to do here though, so there is my sky in the background. Ah, so now what I want to do is actually have that in the background. So drag, lower that one over top, and there you can see the effect of layers. Now you can also change the layers if I, uh, let's see, click we can go we could do a mask on said layer so if i add a layer mask this is a black or white mask that determines what is actually drawn so if i go on top make this guy a bit of gray and you know, draw like so oh, i don't know what layer i'm actually drawing on right here oh, i'm drawing on my primary layer that's going to determine what is actually going to draw now let me just go ahead and actually get rid of that so right click delete the mask. We don't want mask in this particular case. We can see how layers work. Now, if you've ever used any particular painting application before, you've got a pretty good idea of how uh, layer systems work. And you can do some pretty cool stuff in here. You can also change it so that um, you can use textures on top. You can glow. Uh, glow is automatically disabled, but it basically it's, it's applying a lighting effect um, based off of our actual glow over here. Um, you can see a preview of your end result. Now I'm going to go back and show you the uh, textured version for. Well, I guess we'll show you a couple of the other tools here as well. You've got the layer transform, so this is going to layer this my entire select layer. I can uh, move it around this way, so I can scale it, like so, or in or out. So I'm just dealing with my color layer in the background there, so I can um, scale it globally, like so. I can uh, I can move it, like so, and I can rotate it, like so. So that's your layer level transform. You can also go ahead and do it frame tool. Uh, we'll get back to that in a second, actually. Uh, we can zoom in and out. We saw color selection earlier. You can erase. So you got control, of course, over your brush size up here, the opacity. 
and your eraser is going to work it within whatever mode you set. So if I switch to this side, we erase that way. Um, like we saw scripts in action. The only one we actually used was the subdivide to add more detail, but as you can see, there are other options. So you can turn, convert your hexels into triaxels. Um, ironically, I don't think you can go the other way, uh, but you can also import uh, scripts from their site. Now, let's go ahead and um, you can also do layer effects. So this is our background. We add a blur on our sky. Uh, you can change the amount of said blur, so make it a little bit more blurry. Um, and there's the result you get. Now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna create a new document. So let's discard that guy out. All right, and we're gonna switch over to that pixel style or the square view. Same deal, same controls. So I can switch here and go, uh, set that over to 24 and we'll make this one 24. And now we're in a more traditional fat grid pixel style editor. So I'm gonna go over here, pick the line tool. And what I'm gonna do is very quickly create a torch. Um, so color wise, I want like a brown. So let's get over here yellow, we'll make it brownish like so. Just that's way too big, let's switch that down to about three. So this is the body of our torch. So there you can see I'm drawing with a line. And then now we need some fire on our torch. So let's start with a, a bit of a brighter yellow. And there's our fire. And our glow is really pronounced on that one. Here, let's just make that guy. Right. So there is our torch, wonderful thing. Now what we can actually do now is some pretty impressive stuff is we can animate in this application. So here you see our single frame of animation and our base, our torch going on. So let me just zoom that guy out a little bit and resize this guy down. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and add a keyframe on it. Now this is another frame of animation. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do, uh, we'll switch this guy down to one, make it whitish. Oh, I'm gonna do that, color mode. That's gonna add some Of the worst smoke you've ever saw. All right, now I can go ahead and add another frame, like so, and we can go ahead and let's just expand our smoke out a little bit, like so. Vary up our yellow a little bit, like so, and one last frame, and again, switch our smoke up a bit. Like so. So now I go ahead and play this. Oops, come on, play. There you can see our animation over time. We can put it on a loop, like so. So it's the world's crappiest torch, but you can see the end result. And now what we can do, we'll go ahead and we'll set that down to uh, two frames per second instead. So there you can see the end effect. And we've also got layers going on down here for our animation. So we can go ahead and we can add a layer over top, or we can go and we can add layer masks or we can add an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is now over top of this. And what we can do with the adjustment layer is basically add some effects. So let's open that guy. So let's come on. Pick that guy. So you can see here, this is an effect that will be added after the fact. Like we saw earlier, the blue, or the blur, or the linear blur, or a smear. So we'll add a smear effect. And there you can immediately see the result of that on the, the overall layer. So we can change the, the amount that we're smearing. Like so. And you change the angle that we're smearing. Like so. Click and apply that. And now you can see how that's being applied across the top. And there's a whole lot more we can do. We're only kind of scratching the surface of what uh, Marmoset Hexels is capable of. But if you're looking for an isometric painting application, or if you're looking for a fat grid pixel uh, painting application, or you're looking for a 2D animation application, this guy is for you. And then where it gets very cool is when you start and want to actually export the stuff out. So we can export it, we can export animation. I go ahead and do an export animation. I can export it as a sprite sheet ready for use in games, basically. Or we can go ahead and create an animate GIF or just a folder of all the individual frames of animation. So you can easily get your document out and ready to go in your game of choice. We can also probably come down here. You probably want to turn the background off if you are creating a game sprite. But really that is uh, Marmoset Hexels in a nutshell. Now I'm only really, really touching on the basics of what we can do here. We've got a lot of things like we can do blending between layers. We can interact with how they work with each other. So are they additive? Do they um, are multiplicative or subtractive between what they could do? Um, you can actually run uh, special effects. You can download them from their website. So if I go ahead and go into uh, effects, 
uh, and import effects. This will take, oops, not import effects, the other one, effects library. This will bring me to Marmoset's website where we can download various different effects that are available, uh, such as a dithering effect, you can see here, a snow effect, you can see here. These work just like our blur just did. Uh, chromatic aberration, I'll let that one load fast enough. All right, we'll come back to it. Thermal distortion, uh, normal light mapping, which is kind of cool. Uh, so there are these additional effects available. Also, if you come on over here, uh, what I highly recommend you do, if you really want to see what uh, Hexels is capable of other than my uh, butchery in this particular example, uh, come over here to the tools, uh, the tutorials for Hexels and go down and watch. Um, come on. Where did it go? This guy. Right here, Hexel's Adventure with Mark Knight. And what this is basically a, um, a real-time uh, drawing of this particular, uh, uh, how, how he painted this image right here. And it really shows you uh, Hexel's in action. It, and it's, uh, it gives you a pretty good idea of, you know, a good person using this application as opposed to a me person using this application. How you can use the various different layers together to uh, create some pretty impressive effects very fast. How you can use masking better, etc. So, you know, my own work was a butchery of it. Uh, this shows you what you can really do with Hexels and really makes it shine. Uh, but I wanted to introduce this guy to you. It's an interesting pixel art application, especially again if you're working in an isometric style. Um, the default grid is very powerful and you can do some very impressive work very quickly. Uh, of course, it doesn't give you artistic ability right out of the gate. Uh, so, you know, uh, there's the difference between me and the artist you see in the background. But it is a very capable tool and it's one that I recommend you check out if you're in the market for a pixel application tool, especially one that has animation abilities built in. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you did, of course, please do click like. And we cover all kinds of game development applications here on this channel. And if you're interested in more, please do click subscribe. All right, that's it for now. See you all later. Goodbye.